So, November 2010, Chris Lana took his ex-wife Alison, who was suffering from multiple sclerosis, to Dignitas in Switzerland. The play, An Instinct for Kindness, has been shortlisted for the Watson Stage Award. I'm now interviewing the actor Chris Lana. How did you feel about our sister dying before you accompanied your ex-wife Alison to Dignitas? How did I feel about it? Um, I hadn't really, I hadn't really thought about it precisely. Uh, philosophically, I would have had you asked me. I've always been in the position that we control our own lives, we control our own destinies, and that my life is mine, and that no one else has the right to tell me what to do with it. That would have been philosophically my position. Um, but specifically, I hadn't worried about the legality of it because it had never. It had never come across, never come my way, you know, until Alison got very, very ill and asked me to go. And then I, you know, you have to start thinking about this. What checks and balances did the Swiss have in terms of the initial application? What checks and balances do they have? It's quite a rigorous process. Um, I think that it may be changing now, but I think when 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 Alison and I went to Switzerland, there was a uh, there was a popular myth around in this country that you just got on a plane and went. And it was kind of an easy easy process, and it isn't. It's expensive and it's it's uh, quite laborious and lengthy and um, exhausting, actually. Um, the, the process with uh, Dignitas is you have to become a member, you have to get your membership card and you get a yearly newsletter and you have to write quite a lot of, you know, a detailed letter as to why you want to be a member of the, uh, member of the organisation and only once you're a member can you then apply if you get ill or if you, if you want to end your life. Um, and then they are fairly rigorous, it seemed to me, about checking medical records and medical details. They won't just accept you. In fact, most people are not accepted if they apply to Dignitas. So, um, yeah, there was, there was an awful lot of medical documentation and affidavits uh, that, had, that Alison had to send off to Switzerland. And then once we got to Switzerland, she was interviewed by a doctor who had been reviewing her case all, al all along the way. So um, there are people who say it's not rigorous enough a process in Switzerland, um, but it's the, Swiss, it's the Swiss, you know, we haven't got our law here, doesn't allow for anything, so um, that's up to us. If we change the law here, that's up to this country to make sure uh, procedures are in place. What kind of response have you got from the audience? Do you think there is a taboo around this subject? Any more than around death generally? Um, I didn't, when I started writing An Instinct for Kindness, which is uh, my, my play about the experience of taking Alison to Switzerland, I, re I had really no idea what, what would come out of it as a theatre piece at the end of it. I just knew I had a, this story to tell. Um, I didn't know whether people would find it prurient or exploitative or just bad taste to be telling this story, which was personal and indeed true. Um, but if anybody has found it prurient or in bad taste, they haven't told me about it. The response I've had from it has been fantastic. Uh, and yes, it does break a taboo in talking about this, but the people who've come to see the show are, are ready to break that taboo anyway. Um, I mean, I have met people who've said, I can't come to see your show because it, I would f find it too upsetting or I don't want to think about these things or I just don't agree with what you're saying. And that's, that's fine. But from my point of view, putting a, a human face on what can be a very dry, um, high moralistic subject was important. So the response I've had from people who've come to see me the, uh, the show has been overwhelmingly uh, positive. People have been very moved by it because you get to meet, and you get to meet Alison in it. I play Alison as well as myself in it, and you get to meet her and go through the the, the horrible pain that and, and, and that she went through and the decision that she came to, which was very difficult. So it's not it's not an easy watch as a piece of theatre. 
I can say that. Um, but people have been very, very kind about it. You know. What campaigning have you done around assisted dying? I have read, I have read that you're going to put a political standpoint on your play, but you decided against it. What sort of things were you going to say? Ah, what campaigning have I done? Well, since uh, since I, since doing the play, I've become a uh, a patron of Dignity in Dying, which is the uh, the British um, charity which campaigns for a change in the law. Um, they asked me to become a patron and I broadly ag agree with what they're trying to do, so that was a good thing. But other than doing the play, I'm not really suitable for <laughs> political campaigning. Um, th this play is political enough, I think, because it is, it is breaking a slight taboo in talking about the untalkable. Um, when I as I said earlier, when I started writing it and rehearsing it, and the two things went, so I, I didn't write a complete script and then started rehearsing it, it was all mixed in. Um, I didn't quite know what kind of show it was going to be. The experience that I found, and that Alison certainly found, in getting to Dignitas uh, was that it was impossibly hard, very, very hard, very strenuous and expensive and exhausting for her. And so when I started writing and rehearsing, as I dwelt on that and dwelt on what she went through, not just her, her illness, her, her MS, which is, can be a terrible disease, but just fighting for that last bit of dignity was a terrible kind of burden on her. And thinking about it and dwelling on it made me angrier and angrier and angrier. One of the, um, you know, it's such a, it's such a typically kind of English lord we've got, which is a bit of fudge here, a bit of obfuscation there, a bit of cowardice here, and things muddle along. Well, they muddle along because people who are desperate to end their own lives for good reason um, go to Switzerland. They spend a lot of money if they've got it, um, and if they, if they're coherent enough to get there and well enough to get there, that's what they do. So the problem is exported. So as I was writing the play, I got angry and angry about that situation, and I think quite rightly so. But myself and Hannah Eidenau, the director, we quickly realised that actually that, that anger in the play, me standing up and ranting and going, ah, oh, we must change the law, was not, was not appropriate. For the play, the play is Alison's story, and it's about as much her as a as a person, um, and me as a person, our relationship, as it is about her, the way her life ended. Um, and really, it's much, it's a much better piece, I think, because the politics has taken a back seat. But it speaks for itself. It's obvious, you know. Alison was very poorly and should have had the right to die in her own bed at her own time instead of having to fly you know, a thousand miles away and spend a, a lot of money and a lot of stress. But anyway, so I think it's obvious, the politics, in the play. So we cut out a lot of the more um, explicit me ranting politically, because uh, I don't think I'm best at that. I think I'm best at um, summing, up an, summing up an emotional story and let people do their own judgment. After all, the best political theatre is the one not where people are being political on the stage, but where the audience become political after they leave the theatre.